Hi, I'm James Catherall, co-founder of Catherall Audio. Today, we're going to be talking about some important steps that you need to take anytime you're using MainStage on a new computer. And this is going to be talking about the MainStage preferences. This is important because the MainStage preferences are saved locally to the computer. So what that means is if you're creating a MainStage concert on one computer and then you want to send it to a different computer and use it over there, those preferences you have set up on the original computer will not be saved in the concert when you send it over. So let's hop in our concert and start checking out those preferences. To get to the preferences, you can go up to where it says main stage in the top left and then go to preferences and select from here, or you can just press command comma to get there quickly. If you're on main stage 3.5 or newer, you're gonna have five menus in your preferences. If you're on an older version than 3.5, you'll only have four and it gets rid of that sampler tab in the preferences. Starting here in the general tab, the top part is the tuning. This allows you to change the overall tuning of your main stage concert up 100 cents or down 100 cents or you can double click and type in the specific hertz that you want. Next up is what main stage is going to do when you first open it up. You can click on this drop down menu and you can have it do nothing when you open main stage. You can have it automatically create a new concert from template. You can have it open the most recent concert or open the most recent concert in perform mode. I like to do open most recent concert, but you can also do create new from template as well. It's another useful one. Next up is accessibility. Have open plugins and controls view by default. I'm gonna have that one turned off. The controls view just gets rid of all of those graphic displays in your plugins. So you wanna make sure that you have it set up in editor and not set up in controls by default. Next after that we have alerts. You can reset all the warnings if you've specifically turned off any warnings inside of main stage. Next up is parameter values. So when you set up certain parameters and you have them mapped inside of your concert, you can have saved values and you can, then you can have the current value if you've changed it outside of that saved value. So this is telling it when you change a patch and come back, do you want to come back to the saved value or do you want to come back to that current value that you've changed it to? And then next with that to go with those changes, we have respond to hardware move and we have three different options. We have jump, pickup, and relative. So jump means that if you have something like a fader and the fader is at the top, but in your main stage concert, you have the fader set at the bottom. If you touch that fader, it's gonna automatically jump to wherever that hardware fader is. The next one is pickup. So what that means is if your hardware fader is at the top, but in your main stage concert, it's at the bottom, it's not gonna make any changes until you move that hardware fader down to the bottom to pick it up and then you move it. And then the last one is relative. So that means that no matter where your hardware is, it's gonna move it relative compared to where it is in the main stage concert. So that'll be really good if you have any of those endless knobs on your hardware that you can just keep spinning without it stopping. Then it'll just move it relative as you're spinning that knob instead of having to set that knob to a specific spot and then move it from there. And then finally, we have auto saving. I'll typically have this set to never just because I don't want it to ever automatically save in the middle of a performance because that could end up with some audio dropouts or some other audio issues. So usually I just get used to saving often and really hitting that command S button a lot. Next, let's move on to the audio tab. So in audio, this is gonna be a really important tab if you're using an audio interface with main stage. This is where you're gonna set up that connection for your audio interface. Here at the audio output, this is where you can choose where your audio is gonna get sent to. And then audio input is where you're gonna use if you're using any type of microphones or something like that where you want audio to go into main stage. Here's where you'd set up that audio input. And then below that is your sample rate. I don't wanna open a huge can of worms with this one. So unless you really know what you're doing, you'll wanna leave it at 44.1K as the sample rate. The higher the sample rate, the harder your processor will need to work. And then below there is hot plug behavior and I have it set to alert me. Hot plugging is when you plug something into your computer while it's turned on. So for main stage, that'd be something like your MIDI controller or your audio interface. So this is choosing what you wanna happen when you hot plug something into your computer. You can have it alert you, and that means that a pop-up will appear and say you've plugged in a new device. Do you wanna use this or not? Or you can have it automatically use that device. So that means as soon as you plug it in, it's going to select it and it's going to start using that audio interface or that MIDI controller. Or you can have it do nothing, which means you'd then need to open up the preferences and select it from there. 
I usually have it set to alert me because I think that's the best one for my workflow. Below that is the recording area. This is where you're gonna set everything up to record the outputs of your main stage concert. So here's where you can select what outputs will be recorded. Below that is what file it's gonna get sent to and then what file format it's gonna record as. Below that, you have the 24-bit recording button. If this is checked, it'll be 24-bit recording. If it's unchecked, it'll be 16-bit recording. Next after that, we have silence previous audio patch. That option is for when you're using live audio channel strips inside of main stage. You're telling it how long to wait before it's gonna silence that patch when you change patches. That can be useful if you have a patch change while there's still a little bit of that audio tail coming from that channel strip. You can have it wait a little bit longer so you're not gonna get a hard cutoff as soon as you change patches. Below that is the globally disable feedback protection. So if you have that box checked, you're no longer gonna have that feedback protection turned on inside of your main stage concert. And then finally, at the bottom of the audio preferences, we have the voice limiter active. So that voice limiter is to help with the processing load on your main stage concert. If main stage notices that the strain on the processor is getting pretty high and you might experience audio dropouts, then to prevent that, it's going to automatically stop the oldest voices that have been triggered so that the newer ones can happen without experiencing audio dropouts. You can also go to advanced settings by clicking this button. So these advanced settings are mainly going to help you with your latency inside of your main stage concert. All of these things are going to be a balancing act in your computer. If you want less latency, that's going to put more strain on your processor. If you need to put less strain on your processor, then you're going to end up with more latency. So all you need to do is find that right balance where you're not putting too much strain on your processor, but you also have a manageable amount of latency in your concert. So here in the middle, it'll show you what your latency is round trip and your output. So at the top, we can change our buffer size. A lower number is going to have less latency, but it's going to take more processing power. And then a higher number is going to be a bit safer, but you're also going to have higher latency. So if I go to 1024, you can see my latency went up quite a bit. You also have the IO safety buffer. That safety buffer is just a little bit of extra help from main stage to make sure that you're not going to experience any audio dropouts, but it does add just a little bit more latency as well. Next, we have driver latency. We can see here it even lays it out pretty clearly. The far right side is more safety on your computer so it won't crash or overload your processor. And then on the left side you have less latency but taking up more processing power and you can drag that and see your latency changing. Next we have the CPU usage where you can choose how many cores are going to get used for main stage. Typically I have it set to maxing out all my cores but some people say it can be good to pull it down minus one from your max amount of cores that way one computer core gets saved for everything else outside of main stage. And then at the bottom we have display audio engine overload message. I'll typically have that unchecked just because I know when I'm getting audio dropouts and I don't need a pop-up window that's going to affect it even more when I'm experiencing those types of things. And then finally we have enable rewire host support if you want to use rewire. Next let's move on to the MIDI tab. So this one's pretty short. Here we can just see how many MIDI inputs are detected by main stage. We have a checkbox to warn if there aren't any MIDI devices connected. And below that we have reload patches from saved state when receiving program change. And then in display we can change where middle C is displayed on. It has this setup depending on what type of keyboard you're using. And then under that is we have the program change range, one through 128 and zero through 127. So I talked a little bit more about that program change range number in a previous video where we set up main stage with our notation software. You can check that one out up here. And then under that it has bank select as individual MSB and LSB controllers. And that's for when you're using an external MIDI device with your main stage concert. Now let's move on to the display tab. At the top for inspectors, we have show icons and file browsers. So let's add a channel strip so we see what that means. We see all these little blue folders here, or if I click something else, we can see these little icons as well. If I uncheck that, it gets rid of those. And so it's just the text and not any of those symbols, if that looks better for you. Below that, for the toolbar, we have show CPU and memory meters. I think that one's super important. I feel like everyone should always have that checked right away. That's always one of the number one things. As soon as I set up my main stage concert, that's one of the first ones that I make sure is checked. That one appears up here at the top. You can see your memory usage and your processor usage on your computer. Then you can see show memory usage in patch list. So that'll be over here on the left as you can see how much memory is being used by that patch. Next, we have show warning of computer is running too hot. 
This one's been in main stage for a while now, and I've actually never really seen it get triggered. So I don't know if maybe this is something that only goes off in really extreme events, but I've gotten in some pretty hot places and I've experienced some heat related issues with my laptops and still haven't seen this pop up. So I don't know how well it's working right now. And then finally here we have show warning if power supply is disconnected. Next up in mixer and plugin windows. You can have it automatically open the plugin window when you add a new plugin. You can have it show recent plugins. I like that one. It's pretty useful if you're adding a lot of the same plugin over and over again. It makes it easy to quickly go to that plugin again. Next we have show bus names in the mixer. So that would be here on your sends. It'll show you the name of that bus in your send when you have that checked. Below that we have wide channel strips in the mixer. So this makes these channel strips a little bit wider. You can uncheck that and you can see how much of a difference it makes. And then finally this is where you can set up your pre-fader metering. You can click this and you'll see that the fader will actually change so you can make it easy to tell when you're doing pre-fader metering. And then finally you have the level meter scale which is over here on the right side. You can click on this and change what's displayed with these numbers on the level meter. And then finally, we have some settings for performance mode. So we have perform in full screen. You can uncheck that if you want to go to performance mode and not have it be full screen mode every time you go to performance mode. The next one is disable screensaver in performance mode. That one's a must if you like to use perform mode. And then finally, this last one, I'm going to go to layout mode so we can see what this one's doing. I go over here, I'm going to click on this keyboard and we can see these boxes here. If I uncheck this, it makes those boxes a bit smaller. You can close out of preferences and then click it again. We'll see these boxes got a little bit smaller. And if I bring my preferences back, go to display and I check those, then you'll see the boxes get a bit bigger. So there it is. That's one of those ones that I don't know why I would wanna have that unchecked. I think having those boxes a little bit bigger makes everything in layout mode a lot easier. Now we're on to the last tab, the sampler tab. So this top part is talking about how the samples are going to be used. You can choose between 32-bit float and original. The main stage user guide suggests using 32-bit float, so that's what I stick with. Next we have where the samples are going to be searched for. You can choose all volumes, only local volumes, or only external volumes. I typically leave that on all volumes. Next is read root key from. So that's for when you're loading in samples where it's gonna try and find the root key of that sample. And there's multiple different options there for how it's gonna try and find it. I typically leave it on file and analysis, but here's all these different ones that you can pick from. And the next one is root key at file name position. So this is just for how the root key is gonna be read. If you're putting numbers in the file names of your samples, then you can select a specific number if you know how that root key is being laid out in the file name. So you can use, read a little bit more about that in the user guide if you know specifically what root number and how you're laying that out in the names of your samples. And then under that, it has keep common samples in memory when switching projects. So that's there if you're going to have those same samples stay loaded between two different projects that you have open in main stage. Next in the sampler tab is the virtual memory area. So when it's active, the initial part of your samples are going to be loaded in your RAM, but then the rest of the tail of that sample is going to be streamed directly from your SSD or your hard drive in your computer. And right now, basically all computers have SSDs and they're all fast enough to be able to handle this type of stuff. So typically it's good to have that set to active, but if you know that you have a lot of RAM and you have more than enough you, than you need for that concert, then you can have it set to not active and it'll only utilize the RAM. But if you end up going over that RAM limit, then you might have some serious distortion or issues with your samples. So for me, it's best to keep that as active. And then next is the buffer range of your samples. You can set it to small, medium, or large. And then next is the hot disk activity. This one you can choose between less, average, or extensive. And choosing between those three options is going to depend on how much live audio you're using in main stage and how many sampler instruments you're using. If your concert is mostly sampler instruments and software instruments, you're going to want to choose less. If your concert is mainly live audio and doing other types of recordings, then you're gonna to wanna to use extensive for that hot disk activity. And then at the bottom, it just has some statistics and data about how much RAM you're gonna need for your concert and what your disk activity is. That bottom statistic that says not read in time is a pretty important one. If you're experiencing a lot of audio dropouts and you see that that number is really high, then you might wanna make some changes in your settings with your samplers just to make sure that you have enough RAM and you're not running into to that issue. And that's preferences inside of main stage. 
So like I said at the beginning, that one's really important to set up right away anytime you're using a new computer with MainStage. You shouldn't go into any performances or even any rehearsals until you've dialed in all those preferences and they're set up exactly how you need them. And that's our video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any main stage topics you'd like for us to cover in a future video, leave a comment down below. And we'll see you in the next one.